Welcome to Upfront. I'm Mary Ruth Snyder. We are coming to you from Shaw slash Roger Studio on Rob Ron Road in Campbell River. We have two very special guests today joining us all the way from the Comox Valley from the Wachier Friendship Center. We have Executive Director Michael Kolkleff and we have Roger Kishi, who is the Housing Coordinator. And they have a very, very big project underway. So let's dig in and find out what that is. So Michael, how long have you been with Wachier? 14 years. 14 years, okay. And in all of those 14 years, you've had many, many programs and many, many projects. Is the current housing one the biggest you've ever done? Certainly is. The housing project, the low-income housing project is 17 to $20 million project. Okay. And Roger's overseeing that, right? And Roger's in charge of that entire project. Okay. Now, Roger, when you, f how long have you been with Wache? I've been there since uh, about 2004, so almost 20 years now. Okay. Yeah. And in that time that you've been there, what has been um, the transition that you've seen in that time from where you guys started to where you are now? Well, the growth has been, has been quite big. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Friendship Center started in 1995 in a little house. Um, and we've, uh, you know, moved to a place now where we've had uh, a couple of other different buildings and we've been in our current uh, building now s since about uh, 2015, but we were well, we just started off in part of the building right. and then it's been about five years now that we were able to purchase the entire building and expand a lot of our, our programs there, including a daycare. Oh, and wow. and um, we started this housing project in the early planning stages back in 2020. Okay. And uh, we began construction in June of this year, June okay. of 2023. Now, let's go back to the building for a second. So for those who don't know, it's on uh, McPhee? Yeah, McAfee? right at seven, 17th and McPhee, okay. right next door to the Shaw building in Courtney. Okay. Um, and now, uh, isn't that where the, in that building, you originally started out in part of it, but yes. there was a radio station in the other part, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jet, Jet, F FM. Jet FM was there, okay. but prior to that, that was where the green sheet, the local Comox Valley newspaper was. Oh, okay. Going back to the late 50s, early 60s. Okay. And at one point, the uh, because the building is quite large, mm -hmm. is there actually was a commercial printing plant in that building, really? and and at one stage it was the largest printing plant on Vancouver Island, so it no printed kidding. a number of newspapers. Oh, okay, so then in what year did you purchase the whole building? Um, Jennifer moved downtown, I think, and then you yeah guys that was it, well, it was about 2015 that okay. we that I think that we, uh, oh no wait, it was earlier than that, but, but we moved and we were leasing space in the building. Okay. And then it was about five years ago that we were able to, to purchase the building. Okay. And then there's another building behind your building, right? And that, isn't there a theater company or something? In the well, it's, it's still all of the old building. Courtney Little Theater used to be in that building. They had space in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then in the, back, in the back, there was just a warehouse space where a number of furniture companies just stored their furniture okay and when we purchased the building we had plans to expand the operations of the friendship center so we canceled the lease for the warehouse and for the courtney little theater they've moved on to another okay. site and uh, so you guys now own all of that that whole stretch yes back in the yeah okay. and so we we had a, uh, we now have a, a, a daycare in the very back of the building where the warehouse used to be. Yes, oh, okay. and you know, Lovely. so we did renovations there and we were fortunate to get capital funding to build the daycare. Nice. And we now have operational funding from Aboriginal Head Start for okay. 30 spaces in our daycare. Great. Yeah. And then, so you started the day, what year did you start the daycare? It was about four years ago now. I think we're in four years because okay. we, the, the first, well we've had this year or this, September was the time that we had the first of our um, the of the children of the daycare graduate from the daycare onto okay. pre onto uh, kindergarten. So, oh, lovely! Yeah, 
That's nice. Yeah. Okay. So now you have a, a number of programs, but the one that you're focused on is the housing. So yeah. when did you, you started the housing project in 2020? Yeah, that's when we started the original planning and then okay. we had to go through um, the stages to um, be ready. Well, we had to do, um, we had to do rezoning yep. and then we had to do our development permit and our building permit. And then all through that process as well, we ha had to do the application processes for funding from the provincial and um, federal governments. Uh, and local governments also became involved as well. The Comox Valley Regional District and the City of Courtney have, have provided uh, financial resources to the, 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 the project as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the federal government, we've had some funding through the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And then from the province, we've had funding through BC Housing. Okay. Now, when, were th when did the shovels go on the ground? So we uh, started our uh, excavation in June of this year. Okay. And really? Yes, in June of this year. I drove by last week and it's already four, there, is it four floors or five? It's five stories and five we're, already at fi uh, we're already at the fifth floor and they're, they're starting to do the roof now. Fabulous. So the, the, the construction uh, process that they're using is that all the, um, all the wall framing is, is, is being prefabricated off site. Yep. And so they bring, they truck them to our site and uh, stand them up, nail them all together. And so they were, you know, after doing all the excavation and everything, they were able to do a floor a week while we were going up. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It must have been, it must be so fascinating for the two of you, having been with uh, the Watch A Friendship Center for so long, to see this literally rise before your eyes. It has yes. been, it has yeah. been a goal uh, of the, uh, the Friendship Center and the board of the Friendship Center since 1995, since the inception of, of the Watch A Friendship Center, to be able to um, build some housing and provide uh, affordable, low cost housing to indigenous people in the Comox Valley. So, so yeah, so it's going back right to 1995 that there has been this, this dream to do it. And now it's, it's uh, well, it's, it's coming to fruition. You know, we still have a ways to go. Um, uh, construction completion is scheduled for December of next year of, of 2024. Okay. So we likely will be um, uh, tenanting the building in early 2025. And how many apartments are there? So it's, it's 40 units of housing. So it's okay. eight studio units and 32 one bedroom units. Okay. And out of those, nine of them will be accessible. Oh, yes. okay. great. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, um, now, the Wache Friendship Center is, are you associated with any particular First Nation or do you, are you in a position where you work with all nations? No, we're not associated with any for particular First Nation. Okay. There's 125 Friendship Centers across Canada. Okay. And 25 in the province of British Columbia. The okay. purpose of Friendship Centers when they were originally created uh, 50 years ago was to assist Indigenous people when they were migrating f on reserve into the uh, into communities and okay. um, and provide services to them because they would no longer be receiving services from their band. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, in a year, how many indigenous individuals do you see coming through your doors? Well, last year we had 134,000 points of service. Oh. And that constitutes uh, 43,000 individuals coming in through the front door. Wow, that's now, extraordinary. That, that means some people came in obviously many, many times. But right. uh, the, the indigenous population in our region that we serve is approximately 8,600. They are off reserve. That are off reserve? Off reserve. Really? Okay, that's, I had, uh, that's a shocking number to me. Okay. 
So it, are the friendship centers across Canada, are, do you, is there a friendship center association that yes. you guys all communicate through? Oh, okay. Provincial, territorial, and federal. Okay. So we belong to the British Columbia Association of okay. Aboriginal Friendship Centers okay. and the National Association of Friendship Centers. Um, the National Association is back east okay. and uh, all friendship centers in Canada are a member of that and we have our, the BC Association that we work with. Okay, awesome. Well, that is fantastic. So, um, Roger, after this project is done, do you have another one in mind? Well, I'm actually hoping to retire, but, <laughs> uh, but, but I'm holding off on that okay. because I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, well, I, I'm, I'm passionate about this yes. and I'm also stubborn. And so I'm going to uh, see this, uh, the project through okay. to, to the time where we're um, welcoming tenants into the building. Um, and then we'll see what happens after that. There, there are other funding opportunities that open up right now through BC mm -hmm. Housing. Yes, I saw um, that. Um, so there's the Community Housing Fund. And just last Friday, they uh, announced the opening of the Indigenous Housing Fund. Okay. Um, so those are open right now. We are busy with our, this current project, so we're not quite anticipating another one yet, and we're still going to be busy with it until early 2025. So. Right. Well, 40 units, that is substantial. Mm -hmm. And it fits perfectly on that little corner. <laughs> well, you know, the, <laughs> in, well the, intention, the intention of, of doing that is when we purchased the building, we, that, that, that area that we're building on now is just a parking lot. Yes. It yeah. was just asphalt. Now it's going to be 40 units of, of low-income housing. Um, and, um, you know, the, the idea of, of building it right there was that we would encourage the, the tenants who lived there to participate in the programming through the Friendship Centre. Right, of course. Whether it be the daycare or yes. other programs that we, we offer through the Friendship Centre. Right, amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, that is fantastic. So congratulations mm -hmm. on the housing project. That is spectacular. And as you know, sorely needed right across Canada and mm -hmm. here on the island for mm -hmm. sure. So that is just, that is to be, the work you've done on that is to be commended. And mm -hmm. thank you so thank much you. for adding 40 units to the housing supply in the Comox Valley. That is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And if you do decide to retire, maybe you could just ease into it. Maybe take on another housing project part time. Uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty uh, um, yeah it's a busy time it is. right now with the uh, with the construction and um, you know just just like any other developer or, or um, you know builder is is the the environment is challenging with labor and and uh, supplies. Yes. Um, so we're, uh, you know, we, we brought on a good uh, set of, uh, of our construction managers and our development consultants and our architects. Good. And they're working their hardest to, to get this done. Yeah. Facing the challenges that are there for all, yeah, other, house, all other building projects. Yeah. Well, it sounds uh, really, uh, it's going to be a unique building. Well, Roger, thank you so much for coming in. Now, what's going to happen now is we are going to take a small break and Roger is going to depart and we have another guest joining Michael for the second half of the show. You're watching Upfront. We will be right back. This is Rogers TV. Welcome back to Upfront. I'm Mary Ruth Snyder. We are coming to you from the Shaw Roger Studio on Rob Ron Road in Campbell River. And we have uh, now we have a second guest joining us for the rest of the show, Shane Colclough. So Shane, how long have you been with the Watche Center? Well, thank you for having me here. I've been with the center since the earliest memory I have is I was 14. Oh. I've been participating in uh, summer internships, volunteering. Okay. It's been a very long relationship. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, before we get into what projects you're overseeing, I want to get a, a sense, um, Michael, what area do you serve? You mentioned that there are friendship centers across Canada. How many are on the island? On the island? Oh, good question. I think seven. Okay. 
And I'm how, just guessing. What's I, the closest one to you? Uh, the Nanaimo. And so in the territory that we serve is between, uh, well, we're the only friendship center between Nanaimo and Port Hardy. Oh, so okay. We serve Campbell River area. We okay. serve uh, two regional districts, basically. Right. So and the Comox Valley Regional District and the Strathcona yes, Regional District. And then okay. sort of the tail end of the Nanaimo re uh, oh, okay. Regional District. All right. Okay. That's a very large area. It is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and um, that's why we see such a large intake of, uh, of clients coming in on an annual basis. Okay. Now, Shane, what are the projects that you oversee that are closest to your heart? Well, there's two programs I participate in. The first one being Jordan's Principal Service Coordinator. And then I also help with the internal infrastructure of the center with regards to its technology. So emails and oh, all the fun okay. tech stuff. So um, you're the tech guru. I am the tech guru, <laughs> for better or worse. That's who I am. Now tell me about Jordan's Principle. What is Jordan's Principle? Sure. Uh, Jordan's Principle is a legal obligation of the Canadian government to support First Nations children in their health, educational, and social development. Jordan's Principle came in quite some time ago, but it's undergone many different iterations. In 2005, Jordan River Anderson of the Norway House Cree First Nations, he passed away in hospital in Manitoba. While the government, both provincial and federal, couldn't determine who should foot the bill for him to go home. He was born and died in that hospital while governments argued. Okay. Jordan's principle came into effect the following years as a result of that. Okay. It's a combined effort of many different societies and people advocating on behalf of First Nations children. And since then it has and continues to make a, an extremely positive impact on many First Nations families. Now, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis f for you? Like, walk us through an example of what, how you deal with or have to work with Jordan's principal. Sure. So the application process is, uh, as my position would entail, a service coordinator just assists with how helping families access Jordan's principal. Okay. So when a, a family re reaches out to me, for example, regarding access to a health, educational, or social support, and those umbrellas are extremely broad, I often ask families and service providers and people in the child circle of care to say, rather than ask if it falls under a certain umbrella, just ask, does it help the child's development? Mm, okay. the, or youth, between the ages of zero and 19, okay. uh, does it support their development? And if the answer to that is yes, then reach out to me. So, for example, a family is struggling to have their child attend a summer camp. They may reach out to me by email or phone or text message. Uh, I live with this phone up at my side here. <laughs> And they, they reach out and they ask me, can Jordan's principal help with this? And of course we can. After that, it just becomes a process of collecting the information we need, getting the supporting documents necessary. And then if I can help it, I won't, they don't have to see the forms. I will fill out the forms myself. Okay. I'll submit it myself with their consent and yes. we'll, we'll work on all that. And then it can take some time, but eventually we do get word back that yes, funding is approved. Okay. And then uh, the Friendship Center, being an ARC-funded organization, ARC just being a fancy way of saying uh, we have the capital necessary to fund a successful request. Right. Uh, we get notified, I notify the family, and we either reimburse the family for that camp, summer camp, for example, okay. or we look to uh, pay for it up front if possible, okay. again, to alleviate that financial stress on the family. Right. And that, that example can be repeated across the board for just about any health, educational, or social item. Okay. Is it a, an autism assessment? Is it mm. an ADHD assessment? A psych ed assessment? Uh, these fall into the health spectrum. And why do those cost money? Like any other test that a person would have, like if I went in and had a test for, you know, 
a blood test or something. There's no charge for that. So why is there a charge for an autism assessment or being on the spectrum? I don't understand. It's mm -hmm. a medical procedure, so why is it not covered under MSP? No, that's a great question, and it is. But the problem is that the existing publicly funded resources are extremely overloaded. Okay. Uh, those particular wait lists are significant. And these are children okay. who are experiencing extreme uh, emotional dysregulation yes. or uh, physical concerns, mental health okay. concerns. And they need access to, uh, these First Nations children need access to that resource, okay. ideally as soon as possible. And so there's a way to pay privately to have yes. that assessment done from a government approved individual. Exactly. As opposed to a registered, on the uh, okay. a registered uh, medical uh, clinic yes. can, and professionals can perform those assessments in okay. a private sector. Mm -hmm. And utilizing Jordan's principle for that, we can, we can facilitate access to those assessments that will help schools and the family and the child's circle of care how, uh, how better to understand the success of this child and what that looks like. Okay. And that, uh, again, those assessments are across the board. Uh, right. The question is, does it benefit the child? Is it right. going to help their development? And if it's a yes, then it falls under... It's always worth principle. reaching out. Okay. Always. All right. So your role is the advocate. You are advocating on... You act as the advocate connector for that family. That is one of the... And again, what I... What... Um, What's so inspiring about that is that many families do not have digital literacy. And in today's world, if you are not fortunate enough to have learned any sort of digital literacy, it creates an unbelievable barrier for them to access even basic services. So that's what you're doing on their behalf, which is wonderful. That's yeah. fantastic. I've often joked to the families, I'm just your personal assistant. <laughs> I'm just here to help. Uh, That's and it. how yeah. can I help? Yeah. And then we just go from there. And it, I, I can, if I can simplify the process by just, all you have to do is text or call me yeah. to figure out what, what support does your child or youth need? And how can we access that? We'll work together. Okay. I'll do the, uh, the difficult part with the paperwork. I can yeah. submit it online. As you said, access to that technology, access to those resources. That's not common. And right. it's even less common if the family is, say, uh, living remotely or right. on reserve in a remote location, right. where access to those resources is extremely limited. Right. Uh, and that's so the, how do people get in touch with you? That's the that's yeah. the sixty four thousand yeah. dollars question right now. Uh, and that's so there's three primary ways, I guess four. OK, uh, but see, the wonderful thing about Jordan's principle is it is designed to support working families and remote communities. Right. So the majority of my clients, I, I service across all of B.C., okay. not just here on Vancouver oh, Island. OK, uh, traditionally, they contact me by text or email or call. Okay. And failing that, they can always drop in in person at Wache. I'm, I'm okay. there every weekday. <laughs> OK, that is fantastic. Now, um, how long have you been working with that program in particular? So that uh, Jordan's principle at Wache has been in effect since June of last year. OK, and mm -hmm. you're the coordinator of that program That's on behalf correct. of Wache. OK, and how do you um, have you been able to reach out to all of the nations to let them know that you're the guy to do that for them? Yep, so we, they, we've okay. made, we have, uh, with assistance from Indigenous Services Canada, yep. I, I still remember those early emails back in the day, they sent out quite a few emails to various different nations across Vancouver Island and CC'd me in them saying, hey, I'm here, okay. uh, feel free to reach out to, to Shane okay. and uh, he'll help you with Jordan's principle. And that initially, you know, that relationship doesn't come with just an email, it comes right. with contact, it comes it with does. success. Yeah. And, and it's far more meaningful to, uh, I, be, I become more of a meaningful person to a nation or to an individual when I say this is something we can do and now we've done it. Right. And quite, quite honestly, no amount of, uh, of, of materials, of, of posting online compares to the family going on Facebook or telling their, I, I, right. it, I had one family contact me uh, and we, I helped them and then 
their their uh, sister-in-law contacted me and then their cousin contacted me and it was just it was they were always referencing the last person who contacted <laughs> me and I was like wow this is great uh, I'm glad awesome. I can help everyone yeah and and that's really the word of mouth is the most powerful okay that's awesome well thank you so much for sharing that aspect um, and how that works and I hope that if anybody out there is watching who is uh, of Indigenous ancestry that they are, if they feel they need assistance with anybody zero to 19, zero right? Zero to 19. Um, that, you know, reach out to Jordan, he's your guy. Now, Michael, we only have a few minutes left. So I know it goes by very, very fast. So could you give us an overview of all of the programs that the Watch A Friendship Center offers in the Comox Valley and throughout? A quick overview would be that we service right from infancy to elders in the community okay. and so as as was mentioned previously uh, after purchasing the building um, I uh, wanted to start off with a daycare center yep. to provide daycare because we also have um, a work BC office in our building oh, so great. Okay. we can put people through training programs, educational programs, yep. um, and they will need daycare when they're in an, a program. Yes. And so we have daycare, we have uh, work BC, we have elders programs, we have youth programs. Uh, basically we have um, about 80 departments that and 42 staff that Holy deliver tomato. all the various programs that we have. Okay. There's a lot of programs that are focused on education, yep. uh, training, um, and uh, volunteering in the communities. But then we have uh, programs dedicated to FASD and working with FASD families. Yep. A program that uh, works with uh, children who are migrating from care under the ministry, the Ministry of Children and Family Development in the province, we have a program where their family history is developed for them so they know where they actually came from okay. and who they can, who they can look up and, uh, and identify with right. after being out of the indigenous community for so long. Okay. Uh, the programs are, we have camping programs, uh, we have Anything that you can think of, we just in our construction in the building, we've finished a brand new gymnasium in the back. Okay. So we'll be doing various sporting activities in there. We have classrooms for awesome. upgrading students. Uh, anybody could go on our website and see uh, all the different programs and services that we provide. And so what's your website? Wachie.com. W-A-C-H-I-A-Y. Dot org. Dot org. Oh, okay. Dot it used org. to be dot com. <laughs> yeah, dot com. It's dot org. That's the tech I'm still doing, yeah, that's <laughs> the tech guru. It was once, and you're not wrong. Yeah. It was just once upon a time. <laughs> okay. Dot, okay. Watch a dot org. Well, that's pretty easy. And what's your phone number? What's the main phone number? 338 well, 250 338 yeah. <laughs> I never use it, so it's, it's a question. Of course. <laughs> All right. Well, Michael and Shane, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate the update on the Watch A Friendship Center. I had no idea you had such a comprehensive offering. That is fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank and you. anybody out there that is looking for uh, programs to do, check out the Watch A Friendship Center in the Comox Valley. They have it literally all. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for watching up front. Please join us again.